and hello everyone and welcome back we're going to get straight into a top eight match we're going to show fefsi oscan versus uh, michaela cavelli both players we've actually um seen on the stream mm -hmm. already yesterday uh fefsi playing your uh, revealing that he had this ho ho running weather ball something <laughs> that was definitely something we hadn't seen much and in that case really won fefsi the game yeah, it was so exciting seeing that weather ball come out from the Ho-Ho and I'm sure it will be up to many more tricks in this next game. Fezzi absolutely loves Ho-Ho and loves developing it throughout the format. Obviously in 2019, we had that rolling format of Sun, Moon and Ultra and I think he had it by his side the whole time and now it's taken him through here into top eight. He's the last German standing at a German regional, um, so he's got the support of the crowd at the back, but also the Italians are in force. So Michele Gavelli has a big amount of supporters as well. Yeah, the Italians always do and we're also after this with going to go into a top eight match mm -hmm. between the two Spanish p people, yes. Eric Rios and Alex Gomez. So exactly. it's going to be a really intense top eight streaming session um, from us here to you guys back at home. But first of all, let's focus on the first top eight one. It's going to be um, Fezzi versus Michele. They're just getting ready. I think the judge is just checking in that everything's all sorted and ready to go. Um, and then we'll be able to get right into it. And I think the winner of that game will be playing against either Flavio um, and, and Bernard. He yeah, Hippolyte, I think his name. Um, I'm yes. so, my French pronunciation is terrible, but we all know that anyway. I should definitely stick to English. But Romy, the teams are on the screen in front of us. Top eight, take it away. Yeah, so uh, Michele running the journey is Crobat, Kangaskhan, Incineroar, Lunala, and the cheeky little ditto. <laughs> <laughs> and on Fefsi's side, we see the Gengar, we see that ho ho where we were just talking about. We also see the Persian Aloden, the Kyogre, the Incineroar, and the Topo Coco. Yes, and we've already spoken about that ho ho but yesterday we spoke a little bit about the Alolan Persian, one of your favorite Pokemon. And it's a Pokemon that can come in, utilize that fake out, and also start reducing the stats of the opposing Pokemon with that parting shot. Get on out of there and come back in and reset uh, fake out later on. Looking though at Hever and McKelly's side, he has got that Xerneas. That's a Pokemon that can apply a lot of pressure to the maneuverability of the dark type Alolan Persian, but he also has that Ditto, a Pokemon that can be so quirky, can be your third restricted, can even be another mega evolution on your team if you time it right. Um, and I think that Pokemon could get up to a lot of tricks, particularly if it's able to maybe copy um, something like the Tapu Koko while facing down against um, Fezzi's sort of Kyogre or Ho-Oh on his team, or even trying to copy that Ho-Oh and get up some more tricks as well. Um, if you are McKelly though, you do have to wonder about how you're going to position your Xerneas really well. That's something that we have seen Fezzi before be able to lock down by using Shadow Tag on that Gengar, pinning it in, attacking it with Sludge Bomb, getting that ho win win that can take those big attacks as well. Um, so he's going to have to work around making sure that his Xerneas is protected. Yeah, so Fezzi has that Gengar, with, you know, with that Shadow Tag ability, mm -hmm. it really stops people from switching out and, and having that freedom. Um, if the uh, if Michele is running something like the U-turn on the Incineroar, it is able to get out of there and is able to switch, but the other Pokémon still going to lock down, meaning that um, he has to kind of really see how his position is in turn one if Fefsi delights decides to lead it and adjust accordingly. Oh, and we do actually <laughs> see the Persian coming out together with a me me Mega Gengar, mm -hmm. as we saw yesterday. And on Michele's side, we have the Lunala and the Crobat coming out. I have a very excitable Romy next to me. She's got two of her favorite Pokemon on the screen there on Fezzi's side. And I absolutely love this lead from Fezzi. Yes, he's got the Gengar there that can trap in both of Mikelly's Pokemon, except the Lunala, it's ghost type. It can switch out. Gengar at the same time applies a lot of pressure to that Pokemon. Um, but you've got the Alolan Persian there as your sort of sidekick. It's got Dark type, it's got Foul Play. Um, so it can apply a lot of pressure to Lunala in turn if Gengar wants to go for something like a Protect. Um, again, Mikelly leading with that Lunala gives him the maneuverability to be able to switch it out. It's ghost type. It's not affected by Shadow Tag, and he's then able to still change up his team. Yeah, so Mikhailov was with that uh, Lunala still threatening for something like Tailwind. Shadow Shield is still intact, meaning that something like a Shadow Ball coming mm -hmm. out from that Gengar is not going to be enough to pick up the KO on that Lunala. And since it is a Ghost type, it can't be fake out by the um, Persian. But also, Crobot usually runs in a focus mid. Yes. It also can't be fake out. So maybe the uh, Lolan uh, Persian is going to go for something like that parting shot. As Lunala is just going to go for a protector and one, maybe just scouting. Uh, what does Fefsi have to um, to beat my uh, Lunala? Goes for that uh, Shadow Ball into the Protect of Lunala. Oscrobat sets up that Tailwind, doubling the speed on, Ma on McHelly's side as that parting shot there <laughs> comes out from the uh, Alolan Persian. Definitely a signature move, lowering that stat and getting 
a switch him. I mean, I know that your favorite Pokemon there, Romy, but you really called that perfectly. The Shadow Ball did go into the Lunala there, protecting on Mikelli's side, just scouting out what the Gengar wants to do, and passing shot coming out from that Alolan Persian, reducing the stats on that Crobat. Maybe predicted the Lunala was going to um, go for the Protect and just wants to ensure that the Persian is able to get off the field. The thing as well in that situation, if you're Fuzzy, you really had nothing to stop the Tailwind going up. Like you said, the Crobat running in a focus, not going to be affected by Fake Out. Um, so unless you had something um, like Taunt on there, it really wasn't going to be able to stop it going up. And of course, Crobat is a very speedy Pokemon as well. So Fezzi very wisely bringing in the Incineroar now um, to apply a lot more pressure to this Lunala. Um, again, he's supporting his Gengar constantly. He may want to switch out on this. Um, he may want to go for the Protect on the Gengar this time, apply more pressure to that Lunala. And again, if you're McKenna, you have that advantage of being a ghost type, you can switch out, you probably want to keep it protected, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Yeah, so Michaela knowing that, you know, I don't want to uh, face a Gengar with my Lunala, uh, even in Tailwind, uh, deciding that it's perfect time to bring in that Cernius. This time, Fessy being mm -hmm. a little bit more defensive, going for that Protect, and a Super Fan coming out from in from the uh, Crobat into that in Incineroar, doing, of course, half damage as Incineroar goes for that U-turn positioning himself again. So Fefty kind of decided to turn one, use that parting shot to mm -hmm. reposition, this time use U-turn to reposition and uh, bringing that <laughs> ho -oh that we saw work so well for him on stream yesterday. I think that was perfectly played by Fezzi. Mikele was very likely going to switch out that Lunala. It had protected. You don't want to risk going for a double protect when you've got Incineroar and Gengar facing down against you on the field. And bringing in your Xerneas that can apply pressure to the Incineroar. Um, yes, it you know it doesn't want to take a sludge bomb from the Gengar, but it can potentially take one and then get that Geomancy up. So Fezzi recognizing that wants to get that Incineroar off the field as quickly as possible and bring in ho -Oh, a Pokemon that can face down against the Xerneas, particularly as it is um, on Geomancy at the moment. Yeah, so Mankele, um now w in this position might really have to see if he can go for something like um, the uh, Geomancy, but depending on like how this Cernius is trade, depending on how the Gengar is trade, now that there is a little bit of chip damage on that Cernius, um, it could actually be taken out by a Sludge Bomb, as Cernius just goes for a Protect, doesn't want to risk it, and the Taunt here coming Ooh. out from the Crobat, maybe wanting to avoid if um, any uh, two wins or something coming out from that hoa, but it just goes for a sacred fire into the protect of that Cernius. Yeah, really wise play there by Mikele going for the taunt. If Fezzi had wanted to set up the Tailwind there, it not only would have equaled it for the next couple of turns, but Mikele's would expire eventually, and then Fezzi would have that advantage going forward. Um, so a good call with the taunt. Unfortunately though, Fezzi going for that sacred fire just wants to remove this um, Xerneas <laughs> from the field. I'm having a lot of hesitations today. Um, the Crobat, however, going back on the offensive, going for another um, Super Fang and just being able to weaken that Ho-Oh even further. Yes, as Xerneas goes for a Geomancy, McKenna thinking now is just the perfect time to set it up, hoping it will also, now that it isn't Tailwind, it will outspeed the Gengar and possibly just live a will probably lift that sludge bomb if it comes out, but maybe something like a double up can now be coming out from both ho -Oh and Gengar, since now the ho -Oh is taunted, it can't also mm -hmm. go for something like Protect. And we see actually that double up coming out <laughs> with the Sacred Fire. Oh, Ooh, but he does actually get that 50% burn. Yeah, gets that burn. That's going to be critical, pulling Xerneas on that timer. And you can see now why Fuzzy going for that Sacred Fire in the previous turn really was him thinking ahead. If he had managed to get that, if Xerneas hadn't protected, mm -hmm. that would have been the KO there with that second follow-up of Sacred Fire. Yeah, and we also just saw the Tailwind running out on mm -hmm. Mekele's side, meaning that he just ha doesn't have that speed advantage, meaning that... that um, Cernius is still faster because of the Geomancy, but it's at such low HP that if uh, FFC can just kind of stall it out, it's, it's not going to get off more than maybe one more attack. That's the thing, you could potentially, in this situation, if you weren't burnt, protect with your Xerneas and get the Tailwind up with your Crobat. Um, yes, you kind of don't need the Tailwind when Xerneas is on the field, but it helps up for the Pokemon in the back. Um, however, you can't afford to protect with your Xerneas at the moment, it is burnt, so you want to go on the offensive, um, which gives Fez the opportunity to, as you can see, going on the defensive. Wants to stall out these burn turns, making sure that Xerneas is removed from the field as quickly as possible. Yes, as, uh, the Xerneas does go for that uh, Dazzling Gleam, doing oh, oh. a little bit of damage on that Ho-Oh, but definitely showing how bulky it can be even after a geomancy it does barely any damage as Crobat set up the tailwind again making sure that Mikhailic just has that speed advantage but she doesn't seem to be able to really stop it as the brave mm -hmm. bird is enough to pick up that KO. Fessy really wanting to make sure okay I want the journey is gone I don't want him to be able to fire off another attack. Exactly and Mikhailic you know he really 
was free to set up that Tailwind ultimately. And even though the Taunt has expired on the ho -Oh, he definitely has the speed advantage on that cro um, Crobat to go for another Taunt. Now, it's whether Fezzi wants to get Taunt in the situation. His ho -Oh is at relatively low health. He might want to switch it out, bring in another Pokemon. But we can see all four Pokemon on here as well. There's no Kyogre, um, so there's no potential for any kind of Weather Ball. Um, ho -Oh really is here to start dealing out some damage with Brave Bird, Sacred Fire, and try and get that Tailwind up. But it's got to avoid that Taunt. Yeah, so the taunt can actually also taunt that is kind of be used because we saw that Gengar quite a, protect quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's my kid just wants to make sure that I want to take the Gengar out while I am still in Tailwind. It might be the perfect way to go for it, but this time it's actually taunting that Ho-Oh just to be sure as the Moon Guys Beam is coming out from that Lunala here, probably going into that Gengar spot. Yes, yeah. my poor Gengar there <laughs> taking, not taking that very well. Sadly, it is more than enough to pick up the KO as ho, -Ho fires back with a Brave Bird into that Lunala, just making sure that it breaks that Shadow Shield. Yeah, that's where maybe bringing the Alolan Persian back in would have been beneficial for Fezzi. Um, it wouldn't have taken as much damage from the Moon Guys Beam, and then you can apply pressure with Foul Play, which is a move we often see on Alolan Persian um, going forward. Um, um, of course, not going for the protect on the Gengar, left it exposed for that powerful Moon Guys Beam. ho -Oh, though, has very crucially um, now broken that Shadow Shield. Um, so now that Lunala is going to be more vulnerable um, for when something like the Foul Play comes in, it's going to deal a lot more damage. And Gengar going down does give Fezzi the opportunity to come back into that. Yes, you won't be able to utilize Fake Out and Persian back on the field, as we said. Um, but I don't think you need it in this situation. At the moment, you're trying to apply pressure with Foul Play. Yeah, so I think in, you're really right, Foul Play into that uh, Lunala. Now that this Shadow Shield is broken, it could possibly be enough to pick up the KO, but also just seeing how incredibly bulky that ho -Oh is. And, and we saw it actually just heal back with that berry, and mm -hmm. it's now almost just back to full health. <laughs> so definitely something my color really has to uh, kind of think about, like how in the end game is he going to take out that ho -Oh? Because uh, we haven't actually seen his last Pokemon yet. Um, seeing, looking mm -hmm. at his team, it could it also just, for instance, be that Ditto or yes. uh, be that Instant Incineroar or Kangaskhan that we've seen so many times. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We haven't seen the Incineroar or Kangaskhan from Mikele. Um, so he does, we haven't seen that fake out and intimidate constantly being rotated through. Um, Lunala here does need to be protected through Mikele. Um, one thing that it, he might have against that Ho-Oh is something like the Z-Move on Lunala. Because um, that would deal out a big chunk of damage. Oh, I saw an avoid there from the Super Kang. I think it was going into the Incineroar slot. I'm it was in the potion oh, slot. Oh, it was into, into the potion yes. slot. There we go. <laughs> Romy keeping a beady eye on this. Um, but... As I was saying, Lunala has access to that Z-move and it's jumping right out in front of us now. Yeah, I think it's a, the perfect opportunity to do quite a lot of damage with that Ho-Oh, making sure that in the end he, he just doesn't face such a bulky Pokemon, but it's also just going into a Persian that now that Turnius is gone, it, mm -hmm. it will be a little bit tougher for Mekele to beat because it's quite a bulky Pokemon and if you don't have something like Moonblast, in the end it can become quite a, a trouble to, to get rid of, especially because it can start farting shooting you and just really lowering everything. And a Persian again, wow, living on with a sliver of hell that is firing back that fall play into the Lunala, which, ooh, oh! the one <laughs> HP. These <laughs> oh all of this Pokemon lay living at such low health, exactly the same that we saw in my last round where everything just kept living <laughs> on a little bit of HP. <laughs> Romy is the lucky charm for these Pokemon in this day too. Um, but a little, I was about to say it's quite heartbreaking for McKelly there to have missed that super fan because it would have then been able to pick up the KO yeah. with the Z move into that Persian. He wouldn't be KO'd by foul play, but guess what? He didn't get KO'd by foul play anyway. No, but it still took a, a lot of damage, meaning mm -hmm. now that anything that pretty much comes out from that Incineroar or that Persian can be enough, or in the back, of course, the whole, it's just more than enough to pick up the KO. So even though it, it, is, it is living, mm -hmm. It is at such low hell that he really has to worry about how he can still utilize it. And he needs to think of a way to deal with that Incineroar as well, because it looks like Crobat can't do too much with it. Genghis Khan's back on the field, though. That's one way to deal with Incineroar. Um, it's got access to, obviously, things like the Fake Out. Um, and we can deal some good damage with Double Edge, or even if it's packing something like Low Kick, that will affect the Incineroar as well. Um, and obviously, coming in unintimidated will give McKelly the advantage here. Wisely going for the Protect, though, with that Lunala. Just wants to protect itself up from losing that one HP damage. And something like a Snarl would definitely be able to pick up the KO there. Going into the Genghis Khan, though, um, is going to be relatively unaffected. Genghis Khan doesn't mind that. It's sort of saying to Incineroar, hey, you're meant to intimidate me. That's your job. Um, and we'll be able to deal out some good damage. Having Ho-Oh back on the field as well. Um, which Pokemon do you feel like this Genghis Khan is going to target down? 
Mm, I think it, it both options are actually quite viable, mm -hmm. seeing that he can also just go for something like Fake Out if, into the Ho-Ho if he wants to make sure that his Lunala gets another attack off. But and seeing what he maybe has in the back, Incineroar might just really be hard to deal with him as well. Uh, seeing that he only has uh, the Crobat and the Lunala, mm -hmm. then Incineroar can become a really big problem is he, if he doesn't take it out soon. Yeah, that's the thing. Genghis Khan does not want to be intimidated by Incineroar. And if Fezzi does have the maneuverability to switch out that Incineroar, bring it back in, uh, particularly as Lunala is on such low health, and Kelly could easily be pinned down to just his Crobat and Genghis Khan now, unable to reset Intimidate. Um, that is something he's definitely going to have to be cautious about. Going very strong for this double edge, though, going into that Incineroar, wants to get it off the field, and it does. Yeah, so the double edge, luckily enough for my Kelly, is enough to this time pick mm -hmm. up the KO on that Incineroar, which I think... Oh, I also see the Tailwind on the Lunala. I mean, that Michaela actually runs both the Tailwind on the Crobat and the Lunala. As the Sacred Fire misses the Kangas can, can be oh. pretty detrimental there for Fessy just because of that 50% burn chance, mm -hmm. which would be amazing to get against yes. something like like Kangas can. Persian can also uh, just uh, maybe just still uh, go for parting shot, even though it can't switch out. It can just... Keep Start reducing, reducing damage, yeah. damage, and uh, then there is just really nothing um, Michele can do any anymore because he's going to lose that Lunala probably pretty soon. The thing is, Michele's just got Tailwind back up, and there's nothing. Persian can't hit it with Fake Out, for example. Um, so if Michele is able to utilize one more Moonglass Beam, it might be enough to pick up the KO on that Persian. It is in the red HP, leaving Gangscon free to go for some more double edges into that ho -Oh. I think just getting that Tailwind up, making sure that you are going to outspeed this Alolan Persian, um, has been critical. But again, you have to watch out for that ho -Oh maybe going for a Tailwind. I don't know if a double edge from Gangscon is going to be enough. I'm not sure, to be honest, either. Uh, Kangaskhan can be quite an, uh, an offensive Pokemon, but we have saw we saw how bulky Ho-Oh can be and mm -hmm. how, how little damage it actually takes from a lot of attacks. Uh, McKinney wanting to preserve his uh, Kangaskhan there, bringing back the Crobat as Unala goes for another Moon Guys <laughs> beam, as we see that it is very good at doing into that mm -hmm. Persian, just wanting to make sure that it can't really start lowering any of the... Um, Stats from any of the Pokemon on Michaelis' side. I think quite a smart play to oh. switch in mm -hmm. that Crobat there because it's not going to care about the burn as much as Kangaskhan is going to do. And it does mean that if he, uh, Crobat, he loses Crobat or Lunala, he does have another way to use the Fake Out, bring in the unintimidated yes. and unburned Kangaskhan. Maybe with something like a double edge will maybe be enough to pick up the KO. Also just really depending on how this Ho-Oh would train, of course, and how the Kangaskhan is trained. Of course, and that's the key thing here. He's got the Tailwind up on his side. He's got Crobat and Lunala back in, in position. And last time we did see that Super Fang go off and then a follow-up move from the Lunala. Um, as Ho-Oh is the remaining Pokemon for Fezzi, it is his champion, um, and it's holding the fort down here for him. Uh, we can easily see Michele just double up into this slot. Ho-Oh might want to go for a Tailwind, yes, but at this stage, um, he just doesn't have the utensils to be able to fight off three of Michele's Pokemon. So Michele Gavelli taking game one here in Cologne. Yeah, so Fexy actually deciding to um, bring Persian over um, something like Kyogre. Mm -hmm. So maybe I did think he was kind of missing a little bit of firepower to, to effectively deal with uh, Michele. So it, this, his Persian didn't, I think, do as much as he might have wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. It did pick up that KO against Lunala, which that it really needed to do. That of course was no. It didn't pick up the KO. It left. It left yeah, sorry, it didn't pick it up. And if he managed to KO that Lunala, it would have sort of saved him a couple of turns down the line. But able to hang on with that one hit point. Yeah. So uh, McKenna just deciding to to bring that uh, Cernius, Kangaskhan, Lunala, and Crobat, which I mm -hmm. think just worked really well for him. Yes. Having uh, two Tailwind setters, meaning that even if he loses Crobat at some point, he can still utilize that speed control with Lunala. And I think that's really. Uh, looking at Fafsi's team, I'm just not really sure how he can stop the Tailwind from going up. Yeah, that's the thing. F um, Michele really relied on getting that Tailwind up. We saw he had it on both Lunala and Crobat, and it just kept giving him the advantage um, against Fezzi. The other problem he has as well is with that Crobat not being able to be fake-outed by either his Incineroar or the Alolan Persian, it really does give Fezzi a lot of trouble. His only way to kind of match that Tailwind is through the Ho-Oh. We saw it got taunted. That's something he's got to be really aware of. Um, and with Crobat being so speedy and unable to stop um, getting the moves off, um, he's going to be able to have to um, sort of try and get um, the speed advantage back up. Of course, we don't believe actually that Ho -Oh is running Tailwind. I'm not sure. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't seen, seen it. it but the only, I think we've only seen so far the Brave Bird, Sacred Fire, and a Weather Ball coming out. But yes, I do just think that fourth move. I do think that 
if he had Tailwind, he would have probably gone for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm really more thinking about something like Protect, um, which is often run on, on Ho-Oh. But now I'm just really, really wondering how um, Fessy would usually deal with like either the Lunal or, or, or Acrobit, which he just can't fake out. I mean, he could be running something like Icy Wind. We've seen it on Gengar in the past. Um, we've seen it on Alolan Persian before. Um, so that could be an option for him, but it's not something he's revealed as of yet. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that's something that he is running on his team or if he's got maybe some he hidden tech. Sometimes we've even seen Gengar running Trick Room um, that can just throw things on a tilt. But looking at his team, he's really, really speedy. That's not going to be an option for him here. So if I was Fezzi right now, I'm going to be trying to think of a way to get rid of that Tailwind. Yes, maybe you're going to have to let it go at once. We see the Lunala and the Crobat on the field there. Um, but possibly once you've let the first three turns peter out, then you'll stop it going up again, maybe pick up some KOs. Yeah, so if this um, Persian and, and is running something like Icy Wind, I would think this would be the perfect opportunity mm -hmm. to go for it. You can break the Sash on the Crobat and you can break the Shadow Shield on Lunala, yes. meaning that something um, like a Shadow Ball from Gengar could just pick up a good KO on that Lunala. Exactly, and if these are the two Pokemon we just spoke about, if you're going um, to try and start reducing um, the speed on your opponent's side, even if they get a Tailwind up, if you hit them with two Icy Winds, then it's a level playing field again. Hey, if you hit them with three, then you've got the speed advantage. But that is quite a tough feat, particularly when you've got some, a Pokemon like Gengar that has such an offensive pressure as well, doing that Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball, which we saw revealed in the last game as well. You don't want it to necessarily consistently be going for those kind of supportive um, sort of environment changing moves you want to be able to get some damage off and Gengar listening and goes I'm going to Mega Evolve I can give you some damage. Yes Pepsi just wants to make sure that he gives no opportunity for at least Crobat to switch out. Doesn't Lunala goes for protecting <coughs> goes for protect just not, not wanting to take that shadow ball coming out while next turn it can just have that tailwind because that's just what uh, why would you not protect and take any damage if next turn you're going to be into when and you're going to be the faster Pokemon. That's the thing, Fezzi there doubles up into the Lunala, really wants to try and remove him from the field, maybe thinking Mikele was not going to go for the same play as he did last time and protect Lunala and go on the offensive, but Mikele sticking to um, what he knows here, goes for the protect and uh, gets that, um, get the Tailwind up on that Crobat. A Lowland Persian though, shooting back out as Incineroar comes in, something we saw from Fezzi before, able to apply a lot more pressure to that Lunala and help out its partner Pokemon Gengar. Yeah, so we've not really seen any uh, dark moves besides Snarl coming out mm -hmm. from the Incineroar, meaning that he might not run any something like Darkest Lariat or any other like big attacking moves. Escrobat goes for the taunt into what should have been the Persian. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite a good play, making sure that he can't go for something like the parting shot. Yeah, exactly. Just covering all his bases there. Yes, the Cineros jump back in. This game's looking very similar to the previous <laughs> one with Gengar protecting. Um, so now it's all going to come down to whether Mikele goes for the same play he went for before and just switches out that Lunala. And I believe he brought in the Xerneas last time. Um, or if he's going to go straight on the offensive and try and pick up a clean KO against this Gengar. That would certainly help him out later on. If he does have that Xerneas in the back again, he can bring it in without having to fear for that Gengar and without having to be trapped in. Um, of course, Lunala is still able to switch out. But instead, Gengar's the one going to switch off the field. Yeah, so I think he just... Now that uh, McKellar is in um, Tailwind, something like a Mongeist Beam coming out from the Lunala would just be more than enough to pick up the, the, the KO. And we do see Lunala going for a Mongeist Beam after we saw the Crobat going for a Super Friend into the Incineroar. Yeah, I love this play here by um, McKellar going for the um, Mongeist Beam straight into that slot, but Fezzi realizing that could be the potential play from him here, knowing that he may not want to switch out, brings in the Persian into that slot, able to take that Moonguys beam so well and preserves his Gengar on the back. It does then leave the Lunala exposed to take a snarl from that opposing um, Incineroar. So not only is it now broken the Shadow Shield on Lunala, it's also got mi um, minus one special attack. And also um, fall play might we're gonna see. We it saw might. it live. We <laughs> saw it live on one HP. I mean, and that is also, of course, could possibly be a roll. I'm not sure if FC really wants to go for that, but he could also just go for something like a snarl and a fall play, making sure that if the fall play doesn't pick up the KO, at least he gets it with something like mm -hmm. a move from the Incineroar. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're Lunala right now, you're gonna be a little worried. You're facing down against two Dark type Pokemon. Um, however, we see a haze come out here from the um, opposing Crobat. Just gonna reset. All the stats on the field there, how about its partner Lunala while it goes for its Z-move. Now going down into two Dark type Pokemon, not where you necessarily want this to go, but if you can get your stat back up to normal special attack, you're going to deal out a big chunk of damage. And if that's going to something like the Incineroar, it's already at 50%. 
it's gonna help you out. Yeah, so we saw it, I think, go into the Persian last time, actually doing quite a lot mm -hmm. of damage. Uh, on Incineroar, it, it's generally not worth going with your Z-move on your Nala, and so you see it take the Persian mm -hmm. into the sky, dropping it, just and just making sure that he does that damage on that Persian, because if it goes for something again, like that parting shot, uh, the way Mikali plays, I think it, it can be very detrimental, as it is enough to wow. pick up Persian this time, meaning that now Fefsi is one Pokemon down. Yeah, and I think you're quite right there, Romy. At the end of the day, the Incineroar, it's not going to take too much damage from the Z-move, and also, it's not revealing a big damaging Dark-type move. It is only revealing Snarl, which, yes, will still hurt Lunala, particularly as the Shadow Shield's been broken, but one more Snarl isn't likely to pick up a KO, um, whereas something like Foul Play from the Alolan Persian has a much better chance. Maybe you can survive in one hit points, but maybe not <laughs> twice in one set. Um, so that was definitely the right target, and particularly as Crobat has access to that haze, meaning that you can reset any Snarl anyway, the statistic drop doesn't even affect you, so really, really get pay there by Michele. Yeah, so Michele still actually hasn't even sheen it, shown the two Pokemon that he has in the back. Mm -hmm. This little Nana and Crobat has been working incredibly well, and so far Fessy has been having quite a hard time to deal with it, especially because we're kind of looking at Fessy's team. He tends to also uh, revolve a little bit around like the Incineroar and, and the Persian, and he with Crobat having in inner focus and with Lunala being a ghost type, those kind of uh, strategies just don't work as well. Mm -hmm. We also see uh, the Mike Kelly's uh, Tailwind running out, but as we saw in game one, both Lunala and Crobat run that Tailwind, so it might be just really easy for him to set it up again. Oh yeah, there's nothing that Fuzzy can do at the minute to stop that Crobat going for another Tailwind. Um, <laughs> even bringing in the cinema, like we said, it cannot fake out either of these Pokemon. Um, so once again, Fezzi is facing down against um, two Pokemon, able to set up Tailwind, and there's nothing he can do about it. Yes, you've got the Hobo on the field now, you can start dealing out some Sacred Fires, maybe try and get some burns, um, do some big damage with something like a Brave Bird, but ultimately, you're gonna then be on the back foot with that speed advantage. Um, Again, yes, you can start snarling, start whittling away at Lunala a little bit, but it just looks like Michele has got such offensive pressure. Yeah, so also just kind of seeing that now Fessy has revealed all four of his mm -hmm. Pokemon, he did decide to uh, again bring the same Pokemon that yes. didn't seem to work as well for him uh, in game one, but maybe just knowing I have a game plan, I know how to win this, and just going for it. As the Super Fang does, of course, 50% damage. Oh. And this time the burn <laughs> doesn't come out from the Sacred Fire. Definitely good for for the Kangaskhan on the field here. Yeah, I love that play by Fezzi. Going for the Sacred Fire um, would have done some good damage to the opposing Lilana. Maybe got the burn and put it on a timer. But also crucially covers the switch in from this Kangaskhan. Didn't get the burn that he was hoping for, but he has now really weakened that hard-hitting Kangaskhan. We saw it in the last game come out with some big double edges. And the other thing about double edge is you will take a big chunk of recoil damage. Having your HP already taken down to 54 HP remaining is going to put you on that back foot. Yes, you want to go for double edge and deal some KOs, but then you might lose the Pokemon in the same time. Yeah, so now both Pokemon of are, are just about half health, meaning mm -hmm. that he might be able to live one double edge, but two, he's probably just not going to live. And mm -hmm. the uh, Kangaskhan, they are also known to um, either run something like low kick, yes. which I would also maybe like to come uh, out see to hit that Incineroar there on the field. Yeah, and I think as well, Michele, he was very happy with that reaction, um, seeing that the um, Incineral switched out and brought back in the Gengar. Potentially, he's aware of that, and that's the slot he's targeted down. He's gone into the Ho-Oh instead with something like a double edge. And I was not going to worry about a double edge. It's a ghost type. Um, but crucially, Michele is keeping that fourth Pokemon hidden as well. And if it is something like the Dernius, a late game sweep could be optimal for him here. Of course, he gets the Tailwind back up again. There was no reason not to get that speedy um, speed up on the field for Gangaskhan as it does go for a double edge, targets into the Ho-Oh um, and will pick up the KO, forcing Fezzi down to his last two Pokemon remaining, the Gengar and the Incineroar. And even when the Incineroar comes back in and intimidates Gangaskhan, the Kele has access to all of his Pokemon. He can switch it out, bring back in the Lunala. Um, yes, maybe it'll get KO'd. Um, or even, these, um, even the fourth Pokemon to be revealed, but then can bring that Gangaskhan back in later on. Yeah, so maybe also just uh, being, okay, I'm just gonna get an, another attack off with this Kangaskhan. Uh, Lunala in the back, he can just keep it. He, mm -hmm. he is in Tailwind, he can just be like, okay, maybe I'm just gonna, my, my Kangaskhan might not just be worth switching out again. He might just not really need the fake out against the Incineroar, against the Gengar. Just make sure that he brings a new Lala mm -hmm. in Tailwind, which is very easy to at least deal with the Gengar. But he, and since we only saw Snarl coming out from that Incineroar, there might just not be that much he can do. Yeah, I want to know what this Incineroar is going to do. There's no, uh, 
I, I wouldn't think it would be going for Fake Out at this point. Dangus Khan's too low HP um, that it would either protect or switch out. Um, and then, of course, you can't Fake Out the Crowbar. But maybe going for something for the Snarl, maybe trying to catch the Lunala on the switch in could be beneficial for him. But actually, no. Going straight for the Fake Out into that Genghis Khan, living on one hit point. Um, but Michele playing that quite bravely. Maybe he doesn't mind too much about the Genghis Khan. At the end of the day, it can't really hit um, Gengar too much um, if he's got normal and fighting type moves. Um, Gengar, however, going to also target into that Crowbat with a Shadow Ball. Yeah, so we also saw the Taunt coming out on that Gengar that if, in case it runs something like Protect, which is mm -hmm. what we see a lot, there's no way to for Fepsi to actually protect it anymore. So definitely yes. a play that I really like for McHelen, mm -hmm. knowing like, hey, if uh, if I bring my Lunala in into a wind and Gengar can't protect, I'm going to get that KO. Exactly, he's just leaving Gengar exposed for when Lunala comes back in, able to pick up a clean KO. We saw that one Moon Guy's beam was enough in the last game. Um, as the Crobat goes for another Haze, just going to reset the stats, including that Intimidate on the Genghis Khan. I think Michele is quite happy for it to go down in this turn, but he definitely needs to get up as much offensive pressure as possible. You want to remove that Incineroar if Lunala's coming in. Yeah, so we do see the Incineroar just going down to that double edge. With the recall, also Genghis Khan uh, is going to leave the field, but it does just leave him open now to switch in that Lunala. And now, since Gengar mm -hmm. is taunted, there's nothing he can do to stop it. Yeah, that poor Gengar. You can kind of see in his face how frustrated he is right now. <laughs> he just wants to protect and he cannot. Michele just masterfully manages to shut down Fezzi in this way. He constantly applied pressure with the Tailwind and then was able to lock down a lot of the tools that Fezzi had against his team. The Alolan Persian, um, the Gengar and the Incineroar all applied immense pressure to that Lunala. And the one thing Michele did not allow to happen is for that Lunala to be targeted in that way. No, Michele has been very, very safe about, about uh, playing his Lunala, making sure that he is exactly in the right position at, at, at the right time. And you really see these really high level plays as going for that taunt, making sure that in a few turns, you're just going to, ab to be able to take out Gengar. And I just don't really think that anything Fefsi can do at this point anymore, assuming there's maybe also Azernius in the back for McKelly as well, yeah. as Fefsi is going for that full forfeit, realizing there's just nothing he can do at this point anymore. Yeah, so there you see our winner of that top eight game, McKelly Gavelli, will be advancing into top four. We have yet to have confirmation of his opponent, but I'm sure we'll be able to bring that into the next game. But huge congratulations for him here. Um, there's a lot of support in the crowd for him and he just managed to shut down Fezzi's team so well. We didn't see the ditto but that was okay. I think the four Pokemon he picked were excellent. Um, on Fezzi's side, again, unless you brought something like the Tapu Koko to try and just get rid of that Crobat really quickly, there wasn't anything he could do to stop the Tailwind and even if you get rid of the Crobat, Lunala was packing it as well. Yeah, so something he could have potentially gone for is a, a leading Tapu Koko with a fake out user. Okay, you can't fake out a Crobat, but mm -hmm. if it's focus says you can still use fake out for the damage, break that sash, go something for like a tunnel, just making sure that he at least you lose that Crobat. It can't go for Super Fang and doing immediately like 50% damage to you, all of your full health mm -hmm. Pokemon. Do you feel like if Fezzi maybe brought the Kyogre, that could have changed things? Having that second restricted, not so much for the combination with Ho-Oh, but just being able to maybe get himself in a position where he could start dealing out some damage? Yes, I think like when you decide in like this kind of format to only bring uh, one of your restrictions, there has to be a really, really good reason for it. Just mm -hmm. kind of looking at the team that um, McKelly had, I think maybe Kyogre in game two would have been a little bit better. As we saw in game one, the four Pokemon that Fefsi brought, they really weren't able to really utilize it as well as I would have liked. Yeah, exactly. I guess one of the problems he would have faced is he wouldn't have had the speed advantage, so Water Spout just wouldn't have been able to pick up as much damage as possible. But we will be able to hear from McKelly in just a moment. So don't go anywhere, Pokemon trainers. We're going to be joining you with an interview very shortly.